gasping for air in the chase for the home field in the wild card game. And of course, they could turn up the heat on the Cardinals, who clearly must feel the Pirates breathing down their neck. second half of the day-night doubleheader. The Pirates and the Chicago Cubs from PNC Park. The Pirates winning game one, five to four. Sacrifice fly from Starling Marte in the eighth inning to score the winning run. Now the Pirates trail the first place St. Louis Cardinals by just two games in the National League Central Division. The Cardinals will be taking on the Milwaukee Brewers tonight. Greg Brown along with Steve Blass, a nice win for the Bucko Steve and nice to see after they fell behind one to nothing their star steps up at the bottom of the first inning Andrew McCutcheon he's just been doing it all once again this year and he does that kind of thing he is the face of your franchise he's the face of the Pittsburgh Pirates and uh, it's a continual thing with Andrew year after year game after game at bat after at bat yeah he's been getting a lot of help from his friends but it all starts with your star center fielder Andrew McCutcheon hitting running catching he is the man. He is the man for the Pittsburgh Pirates. 93 RBIs now for him, by the way. He had 96 RBIs, as a career high back in 2012. So he's going to top that number. Andrew McCutcheon and the rest of the Pirate offense getting the job done in game one. Tonight, interesting pitching matchup. John Lester for the Cubs. Jay Happ has been phenomenal for the Pittsburgh Pirates. He really has. Uh, take a look at uh, his last start, 10 strikeouts. This guy's not really known to be a strikeout guy. Last four starts, 26 strikeouts, two walks. He is been that good. Now the bottom line there, a little perspective, he has struggled against the Chicago Cubs. He's got to be better against the Cubs, but so far so good for this left-hander. He made his Pirates debut against the Cubs August the 4th, gave up four runs and four and a third, so he looks to turn that around, and the Pirates getting this series started out right with the victory over the Chicago Cubs. They look for the sweep. The day-night doubleheader coming up next.
brought to you by Toyota. Toyota helps you get the most out of your drive. Just ask a friend who drives one. Toyota, let's go places. And by Barrel Automotive, we're driven to be better. Let's go Bucks. So it's a beautiful night now for baseball. It's a great day for the victory. Pirates defeated the Chicago Cubs 5-4 in game one. And happy birthday. A happy birthday. Bucks certainly happy to win game one and now five up on Joe Madden's Cubs for the first wild card, which means it's a home field to the winner. Pirates, as we have been saying for a long time, have their sights set on the Cardinals. The Cardinals taking on the Brewers tonight in Milwaukee. We'll keep you posted. Jay Happ. What a find. Yep. Let's hope Jay can make us happy again tonight. Absolutely terrific. Not so surprising his pitching well, but the strikeouts are very, very impressive for Jay. We're talking about the last four starts, two, three passes. <laughs> it's just been nothing but good. Jay Happ's eighth start with Pittsburgh since coming over in the Deadline deal from the Seattle Mariners. This former Philadelphia Philly veteran. Third round pick of the Phillies. Will face this Cubs lineup. And it's Dexter Fowler. Leading things off the switch hitting center fielder. To be followed by Austin Jackson and Chris Bryant is in right field. Anthony Rizzo. That's cleanup. Starlin Castro back at second base. Javier Baez will start at third. With Addison Russell at short, and David Ross always catches John Lester. Well, let's take a look at your Hyundai numbers for left-hander Jay Happ. As Greg said, making start number eight for the Bucks. It's all good. Five and one, 179 ERA, 40 innings, 42 strikeouts, just seven walks in the first seven starts. I mean, he's just been good. Just been really, really good. And the strikeouts. He's getting the Steve that, that you can't explain it. You've talked about it a lot before about how does he do not a 96 97. It's good enough but it gets on these hitters faster. And I think one of the things too he's, he's thrown so many strikes they're, they're almost in a defensive position many times he's out in front so quickly but uh, yeah last four starts 26 strikeouts two walks on the defense around us Ramirez back over at third base he has played three times over at first Michael Morse will control that position. Pedro Florimon gets the start at shortstop with Josh Harrison at second. Starling Marte returns to the starting lineup in left. Andrew McCutcheon in center. Sean Rodriguez in right. And Francisco Cervelli ready to catch Jay Happ. And all the accolades about Jay Happ, but he has struggled against the Chicago Cubs. He's got a career ERA over six against the Cubbies. It's got to be better. First pitch underway. Foul ball from Dexter Fowler. Fowler is a better hitter from this right side of the plate. It's 322 as a right hand batter. Oh, hits this one in the air to center field, sending McCutcheon back. And a few steps shy of the track. It's the catch. A lot of carry to that ball, so we'll keep an eye on how the ball's flying in the nightcap here. Rivers Casino tips to win. Yeah, he's got to be better. We talked about the uh, the high ERA career-wise against the Cubbies, and we got to play better fundamental baseball. We won this afternoon in spite of ourselves. Let's just be honest about it. So, fewer errors, fewer mistakes, all the way around, all aspects of the game. Got to tighten things up. Austin Jackson takes a strike. And the fly ball as a pinch hitter in the eighth inning stayed in the game to finish up in right. Game one strike is called. First up and left actually. Austin Jackson 0-2 count. Veteran outfielder. James Anthony Happ. Hard hit hey. inside the first base back. He's got great speed and still. Kicks off that short fence. Sean Rodriguez doing what he can. And a double for Austin Jackson. Uh, 
a fly ball to the warning track in center field. Yep, this is going to be two bases no matter where it bounced uh, down deeper or coming off the uh, the stands earlier. So Rodriguez at least had the ball in front of him. There's the bounce back out. Jordan. Yeah, and Sean had to take it on the backhand. If he doesn't pick up that scoop, Jackson's still running. Cubs with a man at second early. Here's Chris Bryant. You know, Greg, we talk about the Pirates' flexibility in terms of personnel. How about Joe Madden's flexibility? Bryant, third baseman, can play right field. The, uh, the former catcher, uh, Kyle Schorber. Schorber, catcher, he can play left field. So well, he's uh, making them flexible, I guess. Yeah, right? Yeah. This is just the fifth start for Chris Bryant in right field. Yeah. And it's 0 2. But he must have confidence there oh, in yeah. the pennant race. Joe Madden, first year skipper of the Chicago Cubs. Out of Hazleton, Pennsylvania. 0 oh, 2 on Bryant. Did he go? In the dirt. Yes, he did. That's the crew chief, Jim Joyce. Chris Bryant, who struck out three times against Garrett Cole in game one. And the uh, production keeps coming for Bryant, and so do the strikeouts. Yep, we're going to ring him up on that one every time. League leading 179 strikeouts for Bryant. One ball in the strike zone. Get him to chase. Carlton, Steve Carlton's old theory is coming back into vogue now. I'm not going to throw strikes unless you force me to. Now it's Anthony Rizzo. Hard hit in the right field. Rodriguez guns toward the plate, but it's off the mark, and Anthony Rizzo gives the Cubs a 1 0 lead. Rips it to right. Pirates had the shift on, but when it's hit that hard, it doesn't have to be that far away from the defender. This gets by him that quickly. Downstairs, not a terrible pitch, but this ball is hit so hard. Even though you're close to it, as a defender, it gets by you that quickly. Rizzo now five for seven against Jay Happ. Those matchups. Starlin Castro takes ball one. Yep, Cubbies scored in the first inning, game number one. It was an unearned run. Well, that's hit well toward left. Marte going to make the catch. Well done. Sterling Marte taking a hit away from Sterling Castro. The Cubs get one. Pirates come to bat.
Cubs take a 1-0 lead. And the Toyota starting lineup, Josh Harrison will lead things off. Starling Marte, Andrew McCutcheon follow. Then it's Aramis Ramirez, Francisco Cervelli, and Michael Morris. The bottom third of the order, Sean Rodriguez, Pedro Florimone, and Jay Happ. Facing the veteran, John Lester. He has won 125 Major League games, his current set of stats for this year, 9 and 10. Last time out for John Lester, very impressive against the Cardinals. He didn't get the win, but he went seven innings, giving up just two hits and a run, a walk, seven strikeouts against the Redbirds. Strike one. And the eternal question for John Lester. The Pirates get on base. Will they run? Everybody else seems to. I'm wondering, too, whether they might even just bunt because he has trouble. He didn't want to throw the ball. the ball he? to first base or second. Yeah, he has trouble. No trouble pitching. This is officially the second start this year against the Pirates for Lester, but he was on the mound back on August the 3rd. Went. One and two thirds innings. The game was postponed. Oh, a hit well to right field. Bryant back and with just enough room. Harrison drives onto the wall and right. There's a third baseman going back on the ball against the scoreboard. Chris Bryant. Makes the play and right. Now Starling Marte. Sacrifice fly in the first game did not start. Clint Hurdle went with the numbers Travis Snyder had against the starter Jason Hamill. One. Good to see number six back in the starting lineup. Nice play defensively, first half of the inning. Garrett Cole looked like he had a W almost locked up when he left the mound. He had the most deceiving final line yeah. you will ever see yeah. for a starter. Hit toward right center. Fowler drifting over. Two outs. Garrett Cole went six and a third, gave up four runs, three earned, and was absolutely dominant. With one out in the uh, seventh ground ball, he got away from Pedro. That opened up the door. And then Soria came through the wild pitches. Both runs scored on those wild pitches, charged to Garrett Cole. So, Crazy, crazy final line for Cole. Crazily inaccurate. But the Pirates won the baseball game. It's lined into left field. Who else? Mr. First inning. He's been wasting no time these days collecting hits. Andrew McCutcheon now with a six game hitting streak. Right there. All right, Steve, here we go. This is this question you asked about. Yep. He just, this guy will not throw to first base, so as soon as he comes set, why not take off? Now, some teams have tried it. 42 steals against him. By, by far the most off yep. any pitcher. By far. And uh, eight have been caught, so he and David Ross work well together. Now, Andrew McCutcheon reached first base back on August the 3rd and tried to take off and was thrown out by Ross with Lester look, on the look mound. At this look at lead. the lead. You could go five more steps if you want. Look at the lead. And a bluff start. And a strike. You know, I can empathize with, with Lester a little bit throwing to bases uh, on play. I never mind throwing the first pickoff plays, but I did not like to throw the ball to bases. I, I, and some pitchers have a little mental thing going to that. And uh, I, I made the throws. Most of the time, they're good ones. But I never look forward to it. Uh, throwing to first base on the pickoffs, I thought that was great. I, I love doing that. See, Steve, he could, McCutcheon could go five more steps if he wanted. And go now. And there he goes. 
The throw is close, but safe. That's how good David Ross is, by the way. Yeah, it, it stuns me how close yep. that, that play, and we've seen other examples of that. But you, you've got to go. And it's easy to, to stay up here because you're not the one. Yeah. I mean, you can tell these players all you want. Hey, you, they, but it's different when you're down there. Yeah. And they are encouraged. Yep. Oh, yeah. There's the stolen base for McCutcheon, his ninth. Looks like a bumblebee going in there with those socks and all the stripes around. <laughs> he's got the striped socks. He's got the cut up sock on his right elbow. And he has a stolen base number nine. He swiped the bag his in the first uh, ball game. A chance for Ramos Ramirez. Updated barrel automotive stolen bases. Pitchers. Most stolen bases against. See a bunch of them playing in this series, right? Yeah. Burnett, Cole, Arietta. Lester, as much as the numbers show you, that should do a lot of damage to Lester. Those stolen bases really haven't hurt him all that much. That one doesn't. One nothing comes. Leading by a score of one to nothing. And before tonight's game, we had a chance to look at the Pirates' future, if you will, in Max Moroff and Yudi Garcia, the Pirates' minor league player and pitcher of the year. Moroff hit 293 with 28 doubles, six triples, and 51 RBIs for Double A Altoona, while Garcia went 12 and five with one save and an ERA of 2.10 and 112 strikeouts for Single A West Virginia. It was kind of cool for those guys to come on up. Meet Frank Cooley, you know, Huntington, Clint Hurdle said hello. Uh, it's kind of a big deal. And nice to see some of the future prospects in the house. They had great years. Yeah, you're Dan. darn right. It's a big deal. <laughs> Boy, line drive, base hit. They have been hitting the ball hard early here against Jay Happ. Javier Baez quickly lines a base hit into right center field. Another player that likes to lift that front foot for his timing mechanism and certainly did work right there. Well, one of the outs was a strikeout, but the uh, out by Fowler to the warning track in center. Jackson ripped a double inside the bag. Rizzo lined a single to right. Castro lined out to left. Here's Addison Russell. Can that necklace be any longer around his neck? No. Not be possible. Runner goes. And the Cubs are nailed at second base. 
the throw from Francisco Cervelli. Josh Harrison applies the tag. Didn't have to move the glove much, even though it looked like a short hop. Maybe the chain held him back. I don't know. But the, the throw was low, and then Josh was able to apply that quick tag. Joe Madden looking and see if they want to look at this. But the throw comes in on the hop, but it's a low hop, so it just keeps the glove right there, and the runner has to slide into it. Nice movement, and then Josh did his best to sell the out call. Man's not happy that the game is being delayed. Another look. Caught stealing. A quick tag See, by Jay Hay. And that's that's the difficult part of that. The tag is up on the body, and where's the foot? You get the call. Ball one strike on Addison Russell. I really can understand. I can understand a lot of reviews on those kind of plays when the tag is one one area and the contact with the bases down the line a little bit in terms of the body. Crew chief Jim Joyce. Always looking quite dapper. Home plate umpire Pat Hoberg. Hoberg's second base Greg Gibson. Toby Basner is at third. So Chad Fairchild, who was behind the plate for game one, has this game off. Deep short, Flory Moen. Get some. He made that look easy. Deep short. Uh, that's some good defense. The Harrison uh, tag applied this. Play from uh, the hole at shortstop by Florimon. He's going to have that back foot almost on the grass and the long throw. Yep, no need for review there. Is Big Michael Morris. Yeah, he can get way out yeah. there on the stretch. He can buy you some time. Nice play on both sides. David Ross batting 184. Veteran backstop for the homer and nine RBIs. The television star David Ross. See him on those commercials for awareness for concussions. Yep. He's a pro. Yeah. Well spoken. Yep. Yeah. I'll never forget two. I think it was right after the season started. He was on, might have been the MLB Network. I know you'll be on there tomorrow, but he uh, was talking about Jake Arietta. And he said, I believe this guy's going to perhaps win a Cy Young this year. It was back in April. Who else was, nobody else was saying that. No. 20 wins for Baltimore over a series of good many years. Yeah, he looks Total. for his 20th win of the season tomorrow against A.J. Burnett. Two and two. Jake Arietta, 19 and six with a 199 ERA. AJ Burnett tomorrow. Second start since coming off the DL. And a full count now. They said Hap's control has been stunningly good. And uh, many times guys are on that kind of run with their control. Uh, they'll throw the ball down the middle of the plate here rather than walk somebody take their chances with their defense. Doesn't happen all the time. But it happens on occasion. They're so proud of that control. They don't want to walk anybody. Another ball hit. Oh, oh how about that play. Are you kidding me? Ramos Ramirez. Forget that play right there. Don't forget that play. Ramirez. Oh. Snatches it away. The one hop shot. One nothing Cubs.
was about the defense. Fundamental defense. I wasn't talking about spectacular. The play that Marte made, robbing Castro, the tag applied by Harrison, the play that Florimone and Morris made, and that one, real special by Aramis Ramirez. Yeah, call the cops, another robbery on the North Shore. UPMC scoreboard, 1-0. Good stuff. Jay Happ has to love that. And Cervelli, first pitch swinging, right to third. Anybody can make that play. One hopper to Baez. Myers being very aggressive here against Lester. His first year with the Cubs, a three-time All-Star. Guy who helped the Boston Red Sox win a couple of World Series, signed a massive free agent contract over the winter. Six years, $155 million. Pitch for the Cubs. Traded last summer from Boston to Oakland in the Uena Cespedes deal. Mr. Cespedes is doing all right, isn't he? Pretty darn good for the New York Mets. He's player of the week or yeah. player of the month recently. Oh, and one on Morse. Oh, and two. One hundred fifty five million, huh? Yep. One hundred fifty five big, big ones. ones. Yep. Nine game winner. Yep. Well, he does certainly have a very impressive resume. Yep. Start for the Pirates. A pinch hit grand slam the other night. It was on Saturday against the Brewers. His first as a Pirate. Well, the Pirates have been on a pretty good offensive rampage. He's scoring a bunch of runs. Three and two on Michael Morris. Jason Hamill in game one. Locked up against Garrett Cole. We saw Jason Hamill talking to his mom after the game downstairs. She's a Pittsburgher, Butler. Ball four. One out walk to Michael Morris. Lester's free pass. There's Sean Rodriguez. We want to see your strongest fan photo. Use the hashtag HitDataStrongFan. And you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast brought to you by T-Mobile. Greg, you spent a little time in Butler yesterday, didn't you? Did. Yeah, that's right. The uh, Butler Country Club taking part in the St. Barnabas outing and uh, had a lot of fun with CEO Bill Day and J.D. Turco, CFO, Jeff and Mike joined us. At the Hunter Country Club yesterday. That was a lot of fun for the uh, St. Barnabas charity golf outing. Our producer Pete Tomo was there That's participating. Right. I'm sure he played well. He did. And you were out and about. I was out at uh, Meadowink yesterday for the Tracy Vukic Memorial Tournament. Really her, her dad, bass player for Tommy James and the Shondells. One ball, one strike. You see Michael Morris. Edging away from first base more so than he would have ever thought he'd do in a baseball game. One ball, two strikes, one out. That's 
Rodriguez. You know, Sean Rodriguez has never been a big offensive threat, but he agonizes over every at bat. I mean, he he, he, he wants to, to succeed. He wants to do so well, and it hasn't gone well for him career-wise in, in total, and he, and he knows that. But he wants it every at bat. He wants it every at bat, and every out hurts. Here's Pedro Florimon. As a defensive specialist throughout his career, uh, even uh, Michael Morrison. The one thing you have to worry about. And we talked a little bit about this with the Pirates' base running coach Rick Sofield today. If you get out to that aggressive lead as Morse does, you have to watch from behind because David Ross will fire to first. They get a lot of outs that way. You wind up having a catcher holding the guy. <laughs> He's testing. Yeah, he's Morris really wants to go, but they still they're not convinced. The roller. Castro Good takes boy. care of Florimon and the Pirates leave the man on base. It's one nothing through two. To go back to the playoffs for a third straight season seems like a foregone conclusion, but you always enjoy checking out that magic number. That's the combination of pirate wins. In fact, we'll show you exactly what it is to determine the results. You calculate pirates at this point, pirates wins coupled with the losses of the team to be eliminated. In this case, at the moment, it's the San Francisco Giants who trail the pirates in the wild card. The magic number can never go up, so you're at eight. Up the number of pirate losses, coupled with the giant, the pirates wins, coupled with the giants losses, and the totals eight. The pirates are in. That is not the uh, goal. Just to return to the playoffs. A little stresses that. Kind of a theme all off season. We like the wild card, but we want to win the division. It, it can be a boat race. Sure. To the finish. Pirates team now a season high 31 games over 500. John Lester has two hits now this year. Picked up another hit in his last start. At the beginning of his career old for 58. Speaking of postseason, season ticket members, you want to make sure you take the opportunity to 
pick up those tickets. The deadline to secure your postseason strips is tomorrow at 5 p.m. Go to Pirates.com slash MyTix. Purchase your postseason strip tickets. See you in October. Deadline tomorrow at 5. Mr. Fowler hit a ball to the warning track. Starting off this ball game in center field. And perhaps he won't be seeing as many fastballs as he did in that first at bat. Nice to have a leadoff man that hits 17 home runs, however, as Cubs have Dexter Fowler. Should have. That's yeah. a strike. Needed more than a flinch. Yeah. So really kind of caught that. Right there. there yeah. yeah. Okay. Let's try it again. Almost in the same neighborhood. Very close. Right out number three. If at first you don't succeed, yeah. try the same neighborhood. Make it even better. Not only down, but a little more toward the corner. Don't you wonder there, Steve, when we saw Hoberg flinch, maybe because of the way Cervelli caught that ball, he's thinking to himself, wow, that might have been a strike. And now he's watching, and bang, there it is. Yep. Yep. Mr. Fowler, hard to complain after getting that first, the previous pitch called the ball. Yeah, you know, the umpires aren't machines either. Yeah, they're human, right. they're, they're subject to reactions yeah. and inclinations. Jackson doubled the right. You know, first you, time up. You would wonder too with Anthony Rizzo. I keep thinking about him with his elbows over home plate. If you miss inside to him by two inches, he jumps out of the way. You know, it, it might get into umpire's mind. Boy, that 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 pitch really missed. It was way way inside. You missed by a fraction yeah. because he's on top of the plate. Uh, you wonder how uh, how that how that relates with a future call. Strike three call. Strikes out the side in order. Jay Half. Viewers in the Ephrata area, thanks for watching and rooting on your Pittsburgh Pirates. All of us at Root Sports and the Pirates appreciate your support. And there's 
one nothing. Watching this game on Root Sports tonight. The night doubleheader action. Buckos trailing. Here is Jay Happ. One for 14. The plate. See a lot of this, don't you, Steve? Yep. Couples with uh, differing views on their teams. Emotions, I guess you can yep. say, huh? There you go. There's a couple there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Pirates, Cubs, friendships. Friendly Maybe rivalries. If you're strained, perhaps. Yeah. There's friendships during a series like this. Strike three called. Do you think it's more than any other series? We see the Cubs? Yes. I wonder why that is. Something to think about. Good. And think about spending your lunch break with the Pirates this Thursday afternoon, 12:35, final game of this penultimate homestand. You buy the game ticket. And the Pirates will add $10 in loaded value. Good at concession stands around the ballpark. For lunch with the Buckos, go to Pirates.com slash lunch this coming Thursday. You know, I'd like to see Josh hit a ball like he did in the first inning because there was a slight breeze blowing from left over to right field. I wonder if it uh, held it up a little bit. I thought his ball was going to have enough carry to get off the wall. Pretty good ride, but Brian was there. Nothing. Winds blowing straight down. <laughs> By the way, still scoreless in Milwaukee with the Cardinals and the Brewers. What inning is that? They didn't start again. Oh. Wow. That on strikes. Third K for John Lester. Both of these lefties revving up. Speed Way out in front. There it is, yep. It's in. We're here to tell the truth. Scoreless, yep. Giants red scoreless in San Francisco. Nothing yet on that Cardinal game that starts tomorrow, Steve. No, and uh are the Angels and the Mariners still You're going all night. A lot of pitching on this. Yep. All in one on Marte. Marte getting close to 400 his last seven games against the Cubs. Another base hit for him against the Cubs. So funny, Steve, to see. How, you know, we just saw a series. The, the Brewers have done a real nice job against certain pirate hitters, including Marte. I think about 200 batting average for Marte against the Cubs, the uh, Brewers. But here we are. Next series, the Cubs crushes them. Yep. Just fighting that ball off to right field. Just putting a good swing on it. You can't figure why some yeah. hitters hit against some teams. Some. Isn't that it's, it's crazy, It's right? baffling. It is baffling. And every major league pitcher will get. You ask him who his toughest batter is, he'll hesitate. But he knows the team. He, he knows he, he knows the team. He, he knows the struggles. Most of the time, he'll tell you. He can't tell you the guys he gets out all the time, but he can tell you this guy hits 218 every year, and all of it's against me. <laughs> Marte is a guy that could take a very aggressive lead, but really not doing Modest. much right now. Modest. Lester just holds it there. Marte, one of the more aggressive base runners in the league. So far, Lester has not been hurt. Now, Andrew, not sure that was a strike. No, just yeah. off the plate. Yep. Neither party is going to get the call they want all the time on that location. Marte takes off, and here we go. But he should have kept going. And he's going to be tagged out. So, Pirates trying something. And the Cubs going to get Marte.
John Lester able to get the job done. So he steps off properly, gets the angle, and then it's just a matter of time. So that was textbook stuff by Lester to step off. I wonder if Marte had just kept going, what would have happened? Because once he stopped, then Lester's able to get off and start walking toward him. So well, well, when he when, he, when, he, when he stops, it's an absolute. If he keeps running, who knows? Bad toss, high toss, something like that. But uh, so the discussion continues in the Cubs dugout. Chris Bryant. Yes, he did. Strikeout victim in the first. Stops here. And he, you know, you probably can understand it, Steve, because you're conditioned as a base runner. It's so unusual, right? Yeah, he, he, I'm trapped. That's what do I do? I do. stop. Yeah. yeah. So you're, you're you're trying to recover. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's not in your DNA to try to run right. into outs. Yeah. I wonder if a play like that shuts down the running game. I was just thinking about that. Psychologically, this guy, it, he tempts you and everything, but I saw that, so I don't want to have that happen to me. I wonder. Meanwhile, 3 1 count on Bryant leading off the fourth. They have made his Pirates debut against these Cubs. Lead off walk. Didn't walk too many. That pitch did not miss by much. There's a pump night. Always crowded up there with the pups. Oh, brother. Wait a minute. Equal going to take me out. The game. They want the cat night. Here's Rizzo. Find a single to right field in the first inning. He takes ball one. That walk, by the way, to Chris Bryant, the first that Jay Happ has allowed since August the 29th. Three starts back. That's how good he's been with that control. Going back to a, a fourth inning walk, with DJ LeMayhew against the Rockies on the 29th. Going to pop up, Florimo in shallow left center. On away, brings up Starlin Castro. The Pirates going to honor the great one, Roberto Clemente, tomorrow on Clemente Day. The Clemente family. Going to be here for a pregame on field ceremony before the Pirates and Cubs meet at 705. Plus, first 20,000 fans take home a number 21 t shirt. Compliments of Helimix. For tickets to celebrate Clemente Day, go to pirates.com. Back! I don't know where that microphone was, but. We got the uh, indication they wanted him to come back to first base. Back. Somebody down in that cup dugout, I guess. Yep. Line to left. First and second. Castro was robbed of a hit by Marte to end the first. Not this time. Big swing. Kind of hit that down on the handle a little bit. Oh man, he got some belly. Yep. Oh, that was a big swing too. That back swing. Cracked Cervelli on the back of his hand. And these catchers might wear a glove, but it's it's not a reinforced glove, so you you you're vulnerable. No 
blow for Francisco. Some of the catchers were on. First and second. Javier Baez at the plate. Baez single to right center field in the second that was caught stealing. You talk about a big swing. This young man yeah. has a huge, huge swing, which is great for his power, but will create a lot of strikeouts. But it is a—I mean, he's got a fast bat through the hitting zone. He really does. Great example right there. That uh, that combination of the chain and the, and the face protection. Okay, got it tucked in there. Strikeouts, a real big issue for him, especially when he got called up last year. Not as many in September. Now Cervelli gets another shot. Well, that'll make him forget about the hand. Yeah, yeah. check it. Check your feelings. How are you enjoying the evening so so far, Francisco? Well, you know he is because he wants to play every night. Yeah. I know somebody else is enjoying this evening watching her buckos as Dolores Mickler of Gibsonian, 100 years old today. A fly ball to right, sending Rodriguez back for the second out. Bryant. Moves on. Megan Concepcion celebrating birthday today as well. 40 years old today. Big 4 0. Some numbers there for you. Chris Bryant, Javier Baez, John Lester. And Cervelli will let everybody know what his intentions are should. Castro take off for second. Flashing his signs and then heading on back. Madison Russell. Two on and two outs. Up and in. Up and away. Pedro Florimon made a fine play on Russell in the second. Maybe trying to get Russell to chase with David Ross on deck. 2 0 count. Bryant walked at third. Castro single to left. And does chase two and one. Jay Happ, when he changes speeds, he does not really telegraph. He did. He doesn't give it away either. That could be part of his package. The real good control, a little deceptive on the off-speed stuff. Doesn't commit. Doesn't show them what he's going to be doing. Popped out of play. He's racking up these strikeouts without throwing the ball 95, 96, 97 miles an hour. And then Cervelli wants to talk to him about this 2-2 delivery coming up. Just a, a little, from what we understand, mechanical adjustment or two. Nothing outrageous. Just to help him after his first start. Worked in the bullpen. After giving up four runs on nine hits in four and a third innings, and he has taken off since then. Yeah. Working with the Surgeon General. Yeah. Ray Surge. The Surgeon General, Dr. Dr. Ray, right there. Yeah. With Todd Tomzik. Two and two. Waited on that. Out of the way. Fine play down the seats. A 
about that? That's a great number. Thank you very, yeah. very much on behalf of the organization. And Jay Hack strikes out Addison Russell. He has struck out five. Bucks trail one zip. Just Kutch for Andrew McCutcheon and that great jersey, of course, of the great Roberto Clemente. Hmm. Well, the nominees for this year's Roberto Clemente Award were announced on Monday. Every club has at least one. And the Pirates, it's Andrew McCutcheon. And, of course, just being nominated is an honor in itself. It's just something that's great just because, uh, you know, I'm representing this franchise, uh, the same franchise he represented. And, uh, you know, it, it feels like, uh, you know, it just means a little more, I feel, um, you know, that the fact that I am wearing a Pirates uh, uniform and um, just to know that, uh, you know, I was I was nominated for the award. And, you know, it feels it feels really good. And, you know, this, this is how, you know, I'd like to be remembered is, is, is how people remember him and. Um, you know, it's, it, it's you know it, it's definitely a good feeling, and um, you know, hopefully I, you know, I can go a little further with it. Yeah, there's really not much else you could say there. I think you just about covered it all. And as you guys said, the 14th annual Roberto Clemente Day will be observed tomorrow. Andrew, you're on the right track. Simple as that. Indeed, if he won the national award, every club has a representative nominated, and of course the local writers. Every year, and a different award, but they do name the Roberto Clemente Award winner locally every year. And Andrew McCutcheon has won it four times, only three straight seasons at the end of the year. This is a national award and is certainly deserving. Jimmy Rollins won it last year. And he has retired on the bouncer to Baez. Isn't it uh, awarded during the World Series? Uh, That's when the announcement, announcement yeah. yep. Yeah. Overall winner. Great company, great to just be nominated. Whether you are the overall number one man in that category or not. Ramos Ramirez bounced out in the first. Shirt, Hall of Fame plaque on a T-shirt. Oh, you know, there, there are sometimes you, you play with people, Greg, that you say, "Well, I, I wish I had an appreciation more when I played with them than than uh, 
than I uh, than I did. That's not the case with many. You appreciated never when, when you played. You never, never took it for granted. Never took it for granted. Oh, there's a base hit down the line and left. Cut off by Austin Jackson. Didn't want to take your eyes off him. Off Clemente? Um, off Clemente. And yeah. now Ramirez is here. But yeah, yeah. You know, he was he, he played it differently. He, he had a, he had that presence as we talk about. But he, he played with a flair. He played with an absolute flair. I've got a picture of him kneeling in the on deck circle. It's a wonderful picture. Yeah. He, had, he, he had presence. He had but, presence. But it's neat, though, to hear a former teammate say that while you were playing, you I never, never took him for granted. Never, never. It just, when you arrived as a Pittsburgh Pirate when he was there, it, it, it started, was there. started being yep, magical. Just to play with him for 10 years. I mean, it's, it's so, it's such wonderful accident mm -hmm. of birth. If this uh, one out single by Ramirez doesn't lead to something that's three singles for the Pirates against John Lester. So so walked a man. Former Cub. Thomas Ramirez. Just got done playing another. Club for whom he played, the Milwaukee Brewers. And now it's two and one, and his buddy David Ross going to go out to the mound and talk with him. Yeah, John Lester, a couple of real good starts last few times out. We told you about the St. Louis start three starts ago. The Dodgers knocked him around a little bit. So again, he's, he's nine and ten, 3.50 ERA. You look at somebody that's won 125 games. You treat those kind of people who certainly with respect. Pitching coach Chris Basio in the dugout, and this was going to be the ace until Arietta took off. That is a fair ball. Tyrone Cervelli. Here, Baez guns it over to first. Day on the motor this day in Pirates history. 1938, Pirates beat the Giants at the Polo Ground. 7 2 Lloyd and Paul Wainer. Back to back home runs in the fifth inning. First time in Major League history, the brothers homered back to back. The other time it's happened since, BJ and Justin Upton. They've done it a couple years ago. Big poison, little poison. Got that nickname because uh, I guess in Brooklyn, when they watch the Pirates play, they'd say, there's that big poison, there's that little poison. <laughs> there you go. Big poison, little poison came to be. And Michael Morse, talking about a big poison, he's at the plate. Yeah, it's Paul Bunyan. Michael Morris walked in the second. Talk about possibilities. Lester has given up just 14 home runs, not a disturbing number. One ball, one strike. And Michael Morris, 6'5, 245 pounds. Tapper toward third is Baez again. Boy, that ball took a bad hop on him off the grass. Heck of an adjustment there by Baez. Still one nothing Chicago.
Yeah, this is a heck of a play that uh, Baez made on him. Take a look at it. See the direction, and then one more bounce. Well, went sideways on that last, had some English on it, made it look easy. Yeah, ball. Okay. You know what makes it look easy playing first base is Anthony Rizzo. He, yeah, he does. He's kind of yeah. underrated. Yes, underrated. He he's, he's, he's got really great good. instincts, great moves. Yep. David Ross robbed of a hit by Ramos Ramirez in the second. We've seen some stellar defensive work mm -hmm. here. Ball one didn't miss by much. Ross had a one hop bullet. Ramirez played off to the side. Ball was almost past him. Looked past him. I was asking Pat Hoberg about it. Very politely. Now, why did you call that pitch a strike? See, it was a perfect pitch. Mm -hmm. Another one. Just off the uh, plate. Almost. Jay Hep has struck out five, walked one. Hit the other way out of play, and now a couple of strikes on David Ross. Hap gets a little bit of a break. This is a high octane offense. Doesn't give you much room to breathe, but he does have Ross and Lester hitting eighth and ninth. If he can take advantage of it, no guarantees. Ross hitting 182, Lester with two hits and 53 at bats. They were kind of talking uh, over on the radio side in game one about the feast or famine Chicago offense. Many home runs, but last in team batting average in the National League. Came into game one batting 243 with 158 homers, third most in the league. By comparison, the Pirates are hitting 260. That's the fourth highest average in the league. And the Bucks are 10th in homers with 124. Ross has hit one home run. David not doing any commercials for just for men. The, uh, no beard. Uh, That's right. Coloring stuff. It's tough. <laughs> Scary stuff. And those guys it is what it is. I am who I am. Mm -hmm. Full count on Ross. So he goes down to that Tony Pena squat. Yes. Yeah. In the air. To right field, Rodriguez going back and off the fence. Rodriguez slips a bit. Ross going to have a stand up opposite field double to start the fifth. And I believe it was 3 2 when he hit that shot to Ramirez. So he's had a couple good swings. Full count situations. Up and away. Well, going to reach base either way. Ball four or two run or two base. Hit off high off the wall, by the way. He didn't miss by much of getting out of here. Yeah, very high. Ninth double of the year for David Ross. Now Lester can bunt him to third. Three, 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 three. Someone's yelling. Safe and Ramirez points to the dugout. He's out, says Aramis Ramirez to Jay Happ. He's out, he says. See if Ramirez is right. Tag oh, no, goes, goes up higher again. There's that situation where the tag is applied high in the body, and the foot might be on the bag. No evidence yet that would overturn this. Throw got there in time. Oh, 
little bit surprised they're challenging this one to be honest with you, Steve. Yeah. I don't think it's that close. Unless there's an angle we haven't seen yet. Watch him go up the leg and maybe tag him around the knee. Uh, I agree. I don't I don't think we're gonna do any Pretty business with that. Turn that one. It's almost like if you go straight across instead of up higher. I don't know if that's possible from the angle where we receive the throw or not. They're not going to take very long. Yeah. And now the plot thickens. You take the risk reward situation there. If you get them, you got the pitcher running the bases with one out and a man on first. If you don't, first and third go to the top of the batting order. <laughs> First and third, nobody out. And drilled. McCutcheon on his horse over his head. Ross will score. Lester into third. A double for Dexter Fowler. Two nothing Cubs. Well, to be truth, uh, to tell the truth, that bunt play notwithstanding, the Cubs have hit a lot of balls very hard off Jay Happ tonight. Yes, they have. And we go back to his career ERA of over six. And he got a lot of this one. You can tell location. That's right down the pipeline. Andrew running after it initially like he thought he might be able to run it down, but that ball got out there with so much carry. Not a chance. Dexter Fowler rips a double to center field. Moves Lester to third. And now the infield in. And still nobody out. Jackson struck out 107 times and 419 at bats. The Mariners this season, former teammate, perhaps. That's him. Step number one is limiting damage here in the top of the fifth. Number six. Second time he's gotten Jackson. Jay Happ faces Chris Bryant. Struck him out in the first, walked him leading off the fourth. Another strikeout candidate. Monumental job of not allowing any more with this lineup. It's outstanding rookie Chris Bryant. Two RBIs, fourth in the league. Brian seems to be a lock with less than three weeks to go in the regular season to win Rookie of the Year. And here's what you saw on deck. A lot of people who watch the Cubs play believe he's a deserving MVP candidate. One ball, one strike. And one and two. Well, and a breaking ball upstairs, and it's just an uppercut swing. Uh, you had a chance to fool around with him and uh, not have to go to him. Uh, if you lose him, you still got a, a double play scenario. It's not the greatest thing to face Rizzo with the bases loaded, but. He gets him. Wow, back to back K, seven strikeouts for half. 
he's he's something else. I mean, he really is getting knocked around a little bit, but he has given up two runs so far. And he's got a chance to get out of this. Upstairs, they want it upstairs, and he hits the glove. So Belly's glove was there, so was the baseball. They'll work around Rizzo. Take their chances with Castro. Well, you might be looking at the uh, upcoming at bat of the game to this point. Hap gets out of this with one run having been scored. It's tremendous work. So really wants to talk to him. I'm sure that they're thinking along the same lines. Well, that's a pop night. A lot of Let's smiles. Yeah. Happy Paul. Carlin Castro lined out to left, ending the first inning with uh, Marte robbing him of a hit. Last inning, he lined a single to left. Base is loaded, two outs. The game could be on the line right here. Yep. That bad of the game. Ball one. In a lot of cases, you'd be alarmed. Oh, bad start to the at bat. But with the great control that Hap has had, you know, you're not. Thinking along those lines, unless he misses right here. Tell you one of the more amazing stats for me, Steve, this year: 488 at bats for Starlin Castro, 14 unintentional walks. It's almost impossible to walk this guy. Well, they did walk him intentionally. The league has five times, but unintentionally, Still. 14 walks. Ball one strike. How about, up. how about this? The amazing Jay Happ. Sean Rodriguez there. He gives up one, and that's a big time piece of pitching from Jay Happ. Brought to you by the Chevy Cruze and your Western PA Chevy dealers. And by Day Automotive. We're going to make your day. Let's go, Bucks. 2 nothing, Cubs 
go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Incredibly, just two nothing. By the way, today it's Sparky's ninth birthday. Jay Happ able to get out of that jam after giving up the one run to a third here. Sean Rodriguez, Pedro Florimon, and then Happ. It was incredible. Working to the heart of the batting order. He was able to work around Rizzo, but take nothing away from the job that he did. Rodriguez thinking about bunting 2 0. Another option to try and see if Lester can throw the first. Rodriguez, one of his four home runs this season came against Lester. Back on May the 16th at Wrigley Field, the only run the Pirates would score. Lester went seven innings. Wow, the one run on nine hits, walked one, struck out seven. He beat Garrett Cole four to one that day. Back on May the 16th. You know, this guy's a quality pitcher. There's no doubt about that. I'm kind of stunned. I'm surprised that he has nine, just nine wins. And you wonder if there's stories that uh, I'm not aware of, maybe lack of support or some defense, because this guy is, is is a premier pitcher. Bounce to third. You saw Baez wondering whether he should back up. Decided to take away that final hop. And then gets Sean Rodriguez. And try somebody else. It's four outs in a row at the third base. Now, there have been questions about Lester or Arietta for some time regarding a one game wild card playoff and who would start. Now it, it seems obvious now that would be Arietta, 19 game winner, but still he was recently asked about it and he said, I could give two hoots. He didn't say that, but he said, you know what I mean about getting picked for that. So it gives us the best chance to win. I'll be on the top step of the dugout cheering my tail off for him. Mm -hmm. Of course, he's the guy with the World Series in you know post game experience too. So I mean there's some interest in the conversation because of that. But uh, nine wins against 19 wins. It'd be hard to tell Arietta you're not going to start. Well, third baseman. Back. This ball's fouled off. Dan Heron. Dan Heron needs a shave. Dan Heron needs. Another guy with some postseason experience, Dan Heron. Two balls, two strikes. A little bit surprised that those corners were playing back with Florimo. Not going to butt here. I'll tell you, for a guy that really doesn't hit much at all, he has had his share of excitement so, yeah. so far. He has. Time he? with the Pirates. He <laughs> has. And I don't know what David Dross is going out and telling John Lester about it. The approach to Pedro Florimon, but it's interesting to see the trip out there. Florimon, uh, in case you didn't see game one, after Pedro Alvarez walked, leading off the bottom of the eighth inning against Justin Grimm, Florimon pinch ran for him and stole second and went to third on an errant throw by Miguel Montero and scored on the Marte sacrifice fly. Sunday, he scored the winning run on the walk off. And Josh Harrison delivered. Injury update about three weeks ago. Mux put Jason Mott on the DL shoulder strain. Started throwing. He's up to 120 feet. Hopes to get back on the mound soon as time 
He is running out. Here's Jason Mott. Another guy with some postseason experience, former Cardinal closer. Jay Happ lines it right at Javier Baez. One of the hardest oh, yeah. hit balls of the night off of Lester. Let's go down in order. Baseball on Boot Sports is brought to you by Allegheny Health Network. Health for all. By Kenny Ross. Just ask a neighbor. And by Levin's, the official furniture and mattress supplier of the Pittsburgh Pirates. For the best quality, service, and value, shop Levin's. Let's go Bucks! 2-0 ball game in favor of the Chicago Cubs. John Lester. On just the three hits on a pop night. A team picture here. Uh oh. Somebody doesn't want to be involved. I'm just going to check things out. Oh, yeah. We've got a little. Uh... Mm -hmm. Good turnout tonight. Yes. Excellent. Javier Baez has singled and fly to right. and Brewers are in the top of the third inning in Milwaukee. Nothing, nothing. Another hard hit ball into the right center field gap. Baez lead off with a double. Jay Happ has been keeping it together, but boy, he has been tested. Second hit for Baez. And this one's right there. Seven hits, four for extra bases. Yep. You knew this was two bases, and if anybody fools around out there, this guy has the kind of speed that can make it three. Now, the thing is, Jay Happ now works against the bottom third of the batting order. An average for Russell of about 240, then 184, and then John Lester. So, possibility exists he can work his way out of this one. Certainly not guaranteed, certainly not automatic. Strike. 21 year old Addison Russell in his major league debut here at PNC Park back in April. 
Williams into the seats. Russell struck out his last time up. Bounced a deep short. In his first at bat in the second inning. Two two count. That time it wasn't the umpire that flinched; it was Russell himself, but didn't pull the trigger on the swing. Get him to chase, and now it's three and two. It almost looked like Jay was a little preoccupied with Baez at second base as he came back to home plate. You never know for sure if that's the case, but certainly did look back there very quickly after he delivered the pitch. Full count now. He's punched out seven tonight. And he gets his eighth. He has struck out 26 batters in his last 18 and a third innings. Jay Happ. And that's that's not a great looking pitch, but he had him fooled. Apparently looking for something else, somewhere else. And he gets a, another huge strikeout. Uh, he's working some magic, and, and this is what you call hardcore pitching. David Ross has had two strong at bats against Tab. Mm -hmm. As Russell strikes out for the second time tonight, but Ross robbed of a hit by Aramis Ramirez and then doubled off the right field wall, leading off the fifth. He swings through a 91 mile an hour fastball. David Ross is now four for 11 in his career against Hap. And here he gets him in a two strike situation. You're talking about all those strikeouts and. and he applies pressure without being overpowering by, by throwing a lot of strikes, getting out in front. 26 Ks in the last 18 and a third innings. And Ross is susceptible to that. Ross has struck out 53 times in 135 at bats. But Ross is on the save. <laughs> on the base hit, but yeah, Floyd Moen saves a run for the time being, and David Ross is two for three. Nicely done by Floyd Moen. Softly hit, and that's the reason that Floyd Moen has a chance to keep it in the infield. It's not quite far enough in to jam him enough. Lester in conference with Gary Jones, third base coach. Archimedes Caminero up in the Pirates' pen now. 91 pitches thrown by Jay. He's working hard. He's working very hard to keep it together. Picked up the sacrifice his last time up and reached when half through to third. Trying to bunt the runner to second here. No, no surprise. I mean, he, he doesn't swing the bat very well at all and put down a good bunt. Well, wound up being a good bunt for him. They almost got the runner at third base. Bunts that one foul. He does have five sacrifice bunts, six now. That uh, bunt in the fifth, but he has two hits in 53 at bats. 
Took him, I think, his 68th at bat of his career before picking up his first hit off John Lackey back in July. One ball, one strike. First and third, one out. He gets it down, runner breaks for the plate. And he's going to be out. Thank you. Wow. Javier Baez comes to the plate on the bunt by Lester. I'm not so sure what that was all about. It wasn't an all out squeeze play. You can see it. I mean, it's really no contest. It just takes off late. I, I, I don't get it. Of course, I don't get a lot of the base running these days. Looks like a design play to go on contact, and you know, maybe Lester's supposed yeah. to bunt anywhere but right back to the pitcher. And maybe you have a chance, but that's not. A, that's never a guarantee. See, so he goes right away. Pirates are going to challenge this. The uh, Cubs are going to challenge this, or they're going to ask the crew chief, perhaps, and the home plate umpire to talk things over. See about this uh, Buster Posey rule. Oh, don't tell. No. Don't even bring that up, please. So he uh, moved actually away from the plate when he got the ball. But it's so clear he's got you're allowed to have the baseball to make a tag. I was going to make a pitching change, but they're waiting here. Oh, let me ask you this. If you're a third, you're a third baseman, and you get the ball before the runner gets there. Are you allowed to stand in front of third base? I mean, you, you're preaching to the choir. Yeah. I, I can't stand. I think that is ridiculous. Although I will say that if there's been less, way less this year, when it comes to this. I mean, last year seemed like every close play they would look at it, but they're not reviewing it anymore. And Jay Happ exits. Kibanez Caminero is going to be coming on to turn Fowler around and try and get a big third out. Well, Jay Happ, as Steve said, doing whatever he could to keep it together. He was really doing some work to this point, having allowed the two runs on eight hits. Leaves with eight strikeouts. We'll be back, see if Caminero can get a big out. Puppy there. Oh, and the Beagle's not interested. No. Second and third. This is going on. Only moments ago did Joe Madden actually go back to the dugout. Still talking about that play at the plate with Jim Joyce. And now Caminero to try and get Fowler. First and second. 
Fowler, as we said at the outset, a much better hitter from the right side. So the righty Caminero turns him around. Six and seven innings, 68 strikeouts. Four wins. You're up for that fastball, but he hasn't seen one 0 and 2. Another look at the bunt where Baez breaks for the plate on the comebacker to Hap. And Savelli applies the tag. Baez never got there. 0 and 2. Oh. oh. 1 and 2, and again. Tough take. Fowler thinking he might get the heat. Had he gotten it, I don't know if he'd have had a prayer. Just off the corner. Trying to keep it at a 2 0 game. Hard work. Got him. Arky comes on to strike out Fowler. And Jay Happ. Getting up two runs. Two nothing Cubs. of the Pittsburgh Pirates and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Keep up with the pennant races in true HD quality on MLB.tv Premium, the number one live streaming sports service. College students enjoy a back-to-school offer with 35% off discount. Authentication required, blackouts and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB.tv today. Jay Happ able to keep it together. UPMC scoreboard 2-0. Cubs lead. And back to the top of the order. It's Josh Harrison trying to figure out John Lester. He has allowed three singles. Harrison has flied to right and struck out. And he bounces the first pitch to third. Baez takes care of him. Sixty-three pitches for John Lester. Three scattered singles. A busy evening for Baez. Bases at third base. The sixth put out an assist for him. Marte has one of the three singles. There's a two out base hit to right field in the third, and then he was picked off, caught stealing by Lester.
They have line complete. Five and two thirds. He hits two runs. One unintentional walk and eight strikeouts. Strong work. And again, Marte waits on it and lines it foul. Just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one to look forward to Miller time later in tonight's game brought to you by Miller Lite. No to count on Marte. And Andrew McCutcheon on deck. John Lester looking for his 10th win. Have had at least a base runner in each of the first five innings. Touching a two out walk in the first, a two out hit rather, a one out walk by Michael Morris in the second, the Marte two out base hit in the third, the Ramos Ramirez at a base hit with one out in the fourth. And strikeout number five for Lester. After a 1 2 3 fifth, he's looking to have a 1 2 3 sixth inning now. And he is in control of this ball game. He doesn't have a lot of offense to work with, but very strong. <laughs> Lester has pitched into the ninth inning once. This season. He's got two outs in the sixth, and he is breezing. One of his nine wins against the Pirates at PNC Park. I mean, at uh, Wrigley Field is an official start. It's the Pirates that rain out precipitating this doubleheader today. Two outs and no one on. I think David Ross might have been turned around and said he didn't have to swing. Maybe it was a strike anyway, but uh, it didn't ask for the appeal. Look at the well, here's the non commitment. Take a look at the location. Yeah. Right. That's what he was saying. Maybe four miles per hour, that fastball. Madden watching his left hander. It's a very good game to this point. Two outs, no one on. Just misses three and two, and he's not happy about missing. <laughs> you can hear that. Ramos Ramirez. Lester has this issued one walk. His control has been very, very good this season. And in the air to right, sending Bryant back, nearing the wall. And Bryant makes a fabulous catch. Chris Bryant goes up to get it. Making his fifth start in right field at an unfamiliar PNC Park. Stayed with it. Yep. Had time because it had a lot of height. He was able to get back there and time it, and that's a lot of athletic ability right there.
the items. Fans checking out. Camonero delivers to Austin Jackson. Ball one. Andrew McCutcheon robbed of extra bases by Chris Bryant. Bounce to Ramirez. One out. Chris Bryant. That's a call you gotta make there, Steve. If somebody that's not familiar with that wall, but you gotta determine whether you've got enough height, enough of a jump in you. Otherwise, you're in a lot of trouble. You don't make that catch. That's a terrific play. It really well, is. Health Network Super Mo Lester loved it. Sure. But rather than backing off and playing it off the wall, he determined he could use his 6'5 frame and jumping ability to rob Andrew McCutcheon. He is as advertised. No matter where you put him. 23 years old. What a player. And his fifth major league start in right field tonight. Not afraid of the track. Not afraid of the wall. Kimenez Caminero struck out Dexter Fowler to end the sixth and gets Jackson to bounce out to start the seventh. To the shortstop, Florimo. And in the dirt. And Morris, oh, the ball comes right back, but unfortunately, it went past Morris, and Bryant wisely got right back to the bag. He made the turn, he made the commitment to second base. If the bounce goes to Morris, they can tag him out. Morimon throws the sinker. Morimone. There's the bounce back. Just behind him. And now. Well, if Morse, if that if Morse somehow finds a way to grab it, he can tag Bryant because he did make the turn towards second. Now Florimone was in there for his glove. Charged with the air. Watch Bryant. Yep, that's a commitment there. There's gonna be no argument if they get the ball and tag him. Strike. Chris Bryant reaching on the air. Chris Stewart was charged with an error in the first game, throwing a ball into center field. Trying to throw out a runner stealing. And lined. Oh, stabbed by Ramirez to first. Bryant gets back. Ha, the old timer goes up the ladder. Playing like a kid again, Aramis Ramirez has made two dazzling plays at third. This one, his best. The hot corner. Another look, Allegheny Health Network Super Bowl at the Rammer going up to get it. Robbing Rizzo. That's great to slow that down on our super, super mode to see that. That's great. Back. Rizzo reacts. 
Glad Bryant was able to get back at least. Ramos Ramirez. Broken bat roller to Harrison. To the bat for the out. And the error doesn't hurt. And Ramos Ramirez robs Rizzo. Seventh inning stretch. Two nothing Cubs. Playing beside someone who used to watch him from the stands. A certain visiting clubhouse has the players acting like kids again and much more inside Pirates Baseball. Presented by Allegheny Health Network tonight after post game on Root Sports. Pirates trailing two zip. Guess who leads it off? Make a great play. It wouldn't be a Ramos Ramirez, would it? Well, I'll be darned. Yeah, we just good. got done talking about, about him yeah. inside Pirates Baseball. That's incredible. Eight and a half years as a member of the Chicago Cubs. And Ramos Ramirez. Singled his last time up. Sent along a happy belated birthday wish to our buddy Father Dan Valentine. It was a great birthday, Father Dan. Let's see if the Buccos can come back, make it a doubleheader sweep. Bouncing ball headed up the middle. Ramirez with two hits. Starts off the seventh. Point Park University tweet. That's why I have horses are Pirates fans too. Well, we're well aware of that. Hashtag Bucks Booth. You want to tweet us your comments, thoughts, questions, or photos? Favorite pet? It is a pup night. I can't imagine they'd have a uh, horse night. Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't that be something? I don't know. Maybe we put something, uh, an idea in their, in their minds. I some Bumgarner would like that. He rode in with a World Series flag in uh, San Francisco on a horse opening day. And now the fans get fired up, hoping this is an opening for a comeback. Pirates. The comeback kids this year. And how many times has Cervelli been right in the middle of all this? One and oh. Toward left center field. That's going to get foul. That's going to allow Ramirez to go to third. And it's first and third. And nobody out. It's a big hit for Cervelli because, again, it allows Ramirez to go all the way to third. Once again, he's in the middle of everything. Didn't get all of it, but dumped it into left center field. We got action. Fowler over to 
get it. The crowd reacts behind Cervelli. And now Michael Morse. And they are really revved up now. This Pirates team has come from behind 39 times to win ball games, including game one earlier today. They're revved up without any prompting. Ready to go. Ball one on Morse. He's walked and bounced to third. Infield, of course, looking for a double play ball. Ball two. Nice setup for the big man with a lot of power. Just off the corner. Two and all. And now time called. David Ross out. And he wants uh, almost look like he's calling in the infielders here, David Ross. Didn't it? Yeah. Coach Ross. Looks like he was waving them in. David Ross calling in the infield. Yeah. Ross did that because of the way the crowd was reacting. Would he have done that? The way the crowd was revved up, kind of like a, almost an NBA timeout. I'm just going to come out here and I'm going to slow it down. Take the edge off. Yeah. 2 0 count. Oh, get your money's worth, Michael. 2 and 1 on Morse. Like got tied up a little bit with that having a, been a big power swing, but then having to cut off the power end of it. If that was David Ross's intent, he did a, a nice job. Three and one. Now that will get them back a bit. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna have to do it again. Yeah. Three one count on Morse with nobody out. The infield looking for a ground ball with the Pirates down just two. Hurts will take a free pass. Three and one. Double play ball. Six, four, three. They get one. Not what you had in mind, but it's one. We're on the board. Chick fil A double play. Addison Russell to Castro. The former shortstop on to Rizzo. Russell now playing his more natural position. Yeah. He had been playing second base at the start of the year. It wasn't room service. It, yeah, he had to make, make a play. And the Pirates get one. On the board now, Sean Rodriguez. Struck out and bounced out. The ball, one strike. I mentioned earlier that Rodriguez, one of his home runs coming against John Lester at Wrigley. Back in May, Lester hasn't given up a home run since July 29th. Stand corrected, August 19th. The last home run given up by Lester is Jung Ho Gong has a bat in hand. Very impressive when you consider some of his work, a bit of his work is at Wrigley Field. Has allowed a total of nine. And Jared Hughes getting loose. Yeah. 
14 home runs given up by Lester. This pitch is taken for a ball three and one. Nine of them at home. And the home runs he's given up five on the road. Fans trying to chant Lester. Three one. And he hits him. And now we'll see if Florimone doesn't get lifted in favor of Jung Ho Gong. And he will. Listen to this reaction. Here's Jung Ho for Jung Ho. Once again with no problem. People are on their feet. Jung Ho Gong. Listen to this. Coming out. Maybe he's going to try the same thing Ross tried. Stopped everything. Espacio. Well, they come out with pinch hitters. Talk things over. Stop. Well, Gung has seen Lester a couple of times this season. In fact, we talked about Lester's victory against the Pirates at Wrigley Field on May the 16th. Lester gave up nine hits, two of them against Jung Ho Gung. He was two for three in that ball game. Gung also faced Lester. In the ball game that didn't count was postponed, though he did get in at bat against him and struck out looking back on August the third. We've seen Lester. Pinch hitting for Florimo. Oh, thinking fastball. All in one. Let's go back to when we were talking about that running game against John Lester. They shut it down. <laughs> Pirates haven't done anything since, yep. including when they had first and third early in the inning. And Cervelli at first, and Morris hit into the double play. They give the right side of the infield to Don. Gets away. Rodriguez will move up. Tying run and scoring position here in the seventh. WP on the scorecard. We've seen it game Couple after game. game. One. Yeah, it's just, a, it's just it. a, a theme anymore. Wild pitches. WP on the scorecard. And Ross out to talk with Lester now with a runner at second about signs. More than likely. And we guess talking with Greg Gibson. Yep. Two outs. He will be off and running with contact wherever the ball is hit. All right. Lester Chance. Neil Walker would be next. Two and one. Well, they had the Lester chance going, but then they let's go Bucks. Now they're going back to Lester. Bouncing ball foul. Two and two. Good thing it was with Baez. They're not sitting on the foul line, but close to it. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. And again, they serenade Lester. 
a la Cueto. Struck him out. The Bucks settle for one. As John Lester strikes out Jung Ho Gong. Pirates are on the board. Division there in the top of the fifth in Milwaukee. Cardinals and Brewers scoreless. Ariel Pena making his second big league start for Milwaukee has given up two hits. He's opposed by Carlos Martinez. Chung Ho Gong takes over at shortstop after striking out as a pinch hitter for Pedro Florimon. Greg, is, uh, is Pena a left hander or right hander from Milwaukee? I want to say right hander because they really have a, a, a a real struggling uh, average and an offense against left hand starters. Yeah, he's a righty. Okay. Well, he's doing it on his own then. Javier Baez facing Archimedes Caminero. Caminero's done a great job so far. Needs to put up one more zero, give the Pirates a chance. Two more shots. Pirates put Lester to work at the bottom of the seven. Lester now at 93 pitches, so you would think that the bullpen uh, will be called upon at some point by Joe Madden. Yep, nothing happening yet out there. He's scheduled to bat fourth here. Caminero. Let's go back to the studio. Rob King in a State Farm game break. All right. Thank you, Rob. Watching that one closely. Here's Addison Russell, 0 for 3. And then it will be David Ross, and then the pitcher spot due up, and nobody in the Cub bullpen. Pirates do have action in their pen. 0 and 2. Antonio Bastardo is the lefty, and Mark Melanson is going through his eighth inning routine. The Phantom. No baseball. Phantom on no. Russell strikes out. Tommy Nero dealing here. Uh, Russell never got the fastball he was looking for. David Ross had one of the big hits of this ball game, that leadoff double in the fifth, and he scored the second run for the Cubs. 
Chicago scored its first run in the first inning on an Anthony Rizzo base hit that brought in Austin Jackson. Jay Happ started for the Pirates. Camonero relieved him with two on, two outs in the sixth. Camonero has been very special ever since. John Lester has been terrific. One ball and two strikes. I wonder if, he, uh, as a manager, does he ever consider? You know, Ross is, is two for three. Has hit the ball hard three times. Walking Ross intentionally to get to Lester, figuring you got to sure out or force, yeah. a, or force yeah. the manager's hand. I mean, he's got to sure out because nobody's warming the bullpen. So Lester's going to bat. It's an automatic out. One two pitch. Well. For one thing, he's not a threat to hit the ball out of the ballpark. So he's going to face Lester without being down and out of run. And it's not like you're saving him for next inning because there's no way he's going to bat next inning. Yeah. So why not get it done now? Is my point. Yeah. Get to the automatic out. Well, Caminero has made it automatic. What an outing for Arky Caminero. Four strikeouts, giving the Bucks a chance. Down one. Shots from the Allegheny Health Network. Super Mode 2 1. Cubs in front. Kimenez Caminero getting a pep talk from his catcher, Francisco Cervelli. What a job. And John Lester. One run on five hits. Neil Walker bats for Caminero. And a fly ball. Castro makes the catch. Josh Harrison will be coming to the plate and bringing the lumber is presented by Yellowwood. Take a look at Josh Harrison walking it off on Sunday against the Milwaukee Brewers in the 11th, fifth career walk-off hit, and then gets a whipped cream pie from AJ Burnett. Base runner, base runner, base runner. 
Take that right now. Anything. Cubs get the bullpen up. Let's see right hander Pedro Stroke. One and one. So a strope in the first game. One, two, three inning. Checking out who he might be facing. Stalin Marte is on deck. See the pitch count for Lester at 97. Travis Ishikawa is available. Down the road a bit. Two and two. Brewers take a one nothing lead on the Cardinals. And the sixth, Chris Davis at a home run is 21st. One nothing Milwaukee. Down on strikes. Two outs. Nissan Road ahead. Tomorrow night it's Jake Arietta looking for his 20th win. He'll post AJ Burnett. And then Thursday afternoon it's Charlie Morton against Kyle Hendricks. This four game series. Burnett and a, re a, re a, re a reckoning coming up. A reckoning up. Here's Marte. A hundred pitches now for Lester. Right now you're looking for a one pitch mistake. Yeah. Right over the plate. Was the swing for it, but it wasn't a mistake. Oh, one and two. It seems to have Marte all kind of confused. Marte singled in the third off of Lester. He's now struck out seven. Struck him out in the sixth. One ball, two strikes. He went. No. Not according to Jim Joyce. Oh boy. Pat Holberg, the umpire behind home plate, anything close will ask for an appeal. Was close. Two and two now on Marte. Three and two. It's interesting now. A couple things. Does he stay in the ball game if he walks Marte? And if he does. We take another shot at the stolen base. See if we can get on and hopefully force the hand comes into play. Let's see what happens. Three and two. Does he go to an off speed pitch here and get Marte to chase? Yep. yep. Nope. Fastball down. A little cutter maybe. Struck him out. And the Pirates go down in order. So one more shot down one after eight. Two one.
Data Strong fan photo of the game brought to you by T-Mobile. And uh, from Brittany Teeters. Oh. It's, uh, it's like here at PNC Park. The backdrop. <laughs> two, of, two of them crying, one of them not. The smiles there, first Pirates game. Yes. He's saying, just read it. Look at the baseball. Antonio Bastardo will try and keep it a one run deficit. Neil Walker stays in the game now at second base. Antonio Bastardo coming on for the 58th time. Four wins. 49 and two thirds innings, 56 strikeouts. Keep it close. And Joe Madden lets John Lester bat. He can let him start the ninth. He's at 105 pitches. He had well, done I was wrong on that one. There's no way I thought he let Lester hit him. I didn't think so either. He hasn't done much that's wrong tonight, Mr. Lester. Before the game, I was asking you, Steve, about Lester's dubious mark. Going hitless all that time until July the 6th in his career. And looking up uh, a former teammate of yours, Luke Walker, started his Pirates career 0 for 47. Yeah. Luke. Uh, not strong with a bat. He had one shining moment at the end of Henry Aaron's career when Henry came in to play first base. Luke got a base hit, ran down, and everybody started cheering. And Henry thought it was for him. He took off his hat and waved his no. hat. And Luke said, "Put your hat back on." His his first hit was against uh, Hoyt Wilhelm in the Atlanta Braves in 1973. Luke Walker's. If that was the game. Maybe, RBI I, single. I, I, I wonder if it was. <laughs> it was hilarious. Henry thought everybody was acknowledging him because he's playing first base for uh, <laughs> a rare time. It was for Luke. Right. Luke Walker had some of the best stuff any pirate pitcher has ever had. Just could not throw the ball straight. Left hander with just unbelievable movement. They couldn't hit him when he saw in batting practice, spring training, pirate hitters. Oh. Lester taking some cuts here against Bastardo. Joe Madden's Cubs leading by one run. To losing the first game. Earlier today, five to four. And strikes out Lester looking. Point Park University tweet. Working on my Doc Ellis comic and watching the Bucks. How about that? I was not aware of that. Edge bucket. Hashtag Bucks booth. <laughs> Pretty good work. Doctor. I might want to check that out. Yeah. Why not? Well, those colors. That's that's a busy sign. Yes, it is. And very creative. Well done. I want count on Fowler. Stardo striking out Lester. 13 strikeouts for Pirates pitchers tonight. J. Happ at eight. Caminero had four. Bastardo starts off this inning with a strikeout. Fowler's gone down twice. What a job Caminero did. Cardinals tied that game, by the way. In Milwaukee, it's 1 1. Lester going to try and finish this thing off. Yeah. 
two and two. Two outs. Mostardo gets a strikeout and a bouncer. John Lester is a season high. Innings pitched. Four starts back against the Cleveland Indians. Went eight and two thirds innings, allowing one run on six hits. I think he's thrown as many as 117 pitches. His last complete game was August 7th of last year against the Twins. Austin Jackson doubled with one out in the first and scored the first run. Cubs made it 2 nothing in the fifth when Dexter Fowler doubled home David Ross. The Pirates scored their run in the seventh. 0 oh 2. So many times, how tough it is to sweep a team in a series, and very difficult to sweep a team in a doubleheader. One and two. Two and two. Pirates are playing just their second split doubleheader, day night doubleheader. The history of PNC Park. The first one was July 28, 2001, the first year of this great ballpark. Against the Houston Astros. Two balls, two strikes. Still two and two. It seems like Bastardo has not only gotten better, but he's gotten faster. Now that fastball delivered at 94 miles an hour. He was not throwing 94 at the beginning of the year. Jackson here. 2 2 count. Line drive. Caught by Aramis Ramirez with a game defensively for the Rammer. And he'll have another chance at the plate. We're heading to the bottom of the ninth inning. Aramis Ramirez keeps it a 2 1 game.
for the Buccos. Our coverage starts at 6.30 with Pirates pregame presented by W.B. Mason on Root Sports. Ben looking for his ninth win. And of course, that man, Jake Arrieta, looks for win number 20. That'll be quite a duel. And right now, John Lester will face Andrew McCutcheon. The three, four, five batters for the Pirates do up. They have four of the Pirates' five hits off of Lester. <laughs> Nearly 26,000 on hand. And a chopper toward the shortstop. Russell on a leg. McCutcheon one for four. Now Ramos Ramirez has done tremendous work with his glove. Austin Jackson lines out to Ramirez to end the top of this ninth inning. Stylish also style points. Make a mistake here John. Hasn't made many tonight. Yep. Gets under it. This will be out number two. John Lester. Eight and two thirds innings. Matching. His. Cub high total against Cleveland on the 24th of August. Francisco Cervelli, two ground ball outs, and a base hit to left center field that was in the seventh. That Pirates had runners at first and third, nobody out. And Lester was able to get Michael Morris to hit into a double play. That brought in the run, but that was so big for Lester. One free pass. Michael Morris in the second inning. He's applied the pressure. Strike. And now the Pirates down to their final strike. So Billy will hobble around a bit. Physically for Francisco Chavez. Hey, congratulations to the West Virginia Black Bears. Wyatt Torregas, the manager there, and uh, all the folks that run that team down in Morgantown, beat Staten Island Yankees for the New York Penn League Championship moments ago. Bob Rich, Mindy Rich, the owners, congratulations. Well, one ball, two strikes to count on Cervelli. Strike three call. And a complete game for John Lester, his first with the Chicago Cubs. They split the day-night doubleheader. And all you can do is tip your cap to that kind of pitching performance. And what you've done is basically knock two games off the schedule. 